Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So basically, I'm just here to tell you what to look out for and also what steps in skincare are negotiable or non-negotiable. So the first step to building a skincare routine is trying to determine what your skin type is. And so your skin type could be any one of these things and also you need to consider skin issues that you have like redness, uneven skin tone, texture, blackheads, that kind of thing. Once you've figured out what your skin type is, that's when you can look at products because the products really have to do with what your skin needs are. Skincare definitely is not a one-size-fits-all type of deal and so you really need to pay attention to what your skin needs are and what your skin type is that's why at the beginning of all of my skincare routine videos I always put out the disclaimer that this is my personal skincare routine and may not necessarily work for you because you might have different skin types and different skin needs it's also really important to determine what kind of climate you live in and what kind of environmental stresses you're being exposed to for example are you a swimmer are you exposed to a lot of cool water on a weekly basis do you live somewhere really hot and dry do you live somewhere really 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 humid these are all things to factor into creating your skincare routine and I'll touch on that a little bit later the third step is to determine your budget and so in this video I'm going to give you more inexpensive affordable options but also some high-end options in case you're looking to spend a little bit more money skincare absolutely does not have to be expensive and so that's why I say determine your budget first because it's really easy to get caught up in all the buzzwords and all the really fabulous claims that a product may have but the product may be a hundred dollars um, if you determine your budget beforehand you're a lot less likely to splurge on something kind of useless. Okay, so now we're going to actually get into the skincare routine and the first non-negotiable that you absolutely have to do twice a day is cleanse your skin. So my recommendation is to pick a cleanser that does not have sodium lauryl sulfate or any other harsh surfactants. I did an entire video all about surfactants and common bad surfactants to look out for and so I'll leave that video in the info box for you to go check out but just in general sodium lauryl sulfate is the biggest offender in this category. So obviously the recommendation that I have for you is to use the Alkaline tea tree cleanser because it has sodium lauryl sulfate which is a really gentle non-drying surfactant that's great to use on all skin types for one week only starting today Sorel care has very kindly offered to give you guys 20% off on this alchemine cleanser which brings a price way below ten dollars and so the code for that is SC Kaya 20 because you're getting 20% off normally my discount code is SC Kaya 10 but for one week only ending on December 21st it's going to be SC Kaya 20 or 20% off this amazing alchemine cleanser and so this cleanser is amazing because it has a really gentle surfactant but also doesn't have any really harsh drying stripping ingredients that are going to really mess with your skin's pH or mess with your skin's protective barrier. And so the way that I recommend that you cleanse is that you cleanse with a cleanser. I use about one or two pumps of this every morning and so I just get warm water running and I splash it on my face. I use my cleanser, I kind of like rub it between my fingers um, to get, you know, the froth going um, and then I start to wash my face and I do kind of work it into my skin and make sure I'm really really cleansing you can't just kind of slap on a cleanser and then rinse it off immediately you do need to kind of cleanse your skin in circular motions gently keyword gently so that you are properly cleansing your skin and then you should rinse with warm water not cold water not hot water warm water and so you must cleanse every morning and every night that is a non-negotiable that I think that you should do in your skincare routine and this alchemy cleanser which is super super affordable and really high quality um, is definitely the right one to get the job done the second non-negotiable I have is you guessed it SPF SPF is one of the most important things you can do for your skin because you can really prevent aging in your skin just by using a sunscreen every single day. It's really not that hard. You don't have to spend tons and tons of money on anti-aging skincare because it really just starts with preventing the aging in the first place. So I do have a variety of sunscreens that I can talk to you about. The first one I don't have with me, but it's the it's a CVS Health SPF 50 moisturizer. It has zinc oxide, which is a fantastic physical sunblock, and also octocrylene. Octocrylene is a chemical sunscreen but because it has zinc oxide if you're not already sensitive to chemical sunscreens this is a great way to get your UVA and UVB protection in because I do believe that physical sunblocks are the best way to prevent any sun damage because they prevent both UVA and UVB rays from effectively messing with your skin so another really good ingredient to look for in addition to zinc oxide is titanium dioxide and that's what my Josie Marin sunscreen has this one has both of them actually it has both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide this is one that I personally use every single day because it's really really hydrated and really really dewy if you have very oily skin I recommend the Paula's Choice Resist super light 
uh, Daily Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30. This is formulated for normal, oily, and combination skin because it's quite matte. And this one has zinc oxide, which again, is a fantastic physical sunblock. And it's kind of the middleman for not super dewy or super matte. Um, these two sunscreens are really great. This is the Pharmacy Green Screen SPF 30. Um, this one has both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And then I also have the Polish Choice Redness Relief SPF 30 Mineral Moisturizer. Has both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So these are really two great ones if you're kind of like in the middle, not looking for something really dewy or not looking for something super matte. These are awesome. And then the other two are the other ends of the spectrum. Everything that I talk about will be listed in the info box for you to go check out because I know it's confusing that I just kind of throw products out there and you're like, whoa, what? Okay, the third non-negotiable is moisturizing at night. In the morning, you can kind of get away with not moisturizing because these days, a lot of sunscreens are moisturizers in themselves. They have emollients and humectants in them already, and so they kind of function both as an SPF but also as a moisturizer in the morning. However, you can use SPF at night, but generally, I just don't really see the point to doing that, and also, generally, sunscreens tend to be not as hydrating as I'd like them to be, and so I do recommend using a moisturizer at night that doesn't have any SPF in it. And yes, even if you have oily skin, you still have to moisturize at at night. It turns out that actually if you strip your skin dry by not moisturizing, your skin can actually overcompensate producing even more oil because it's freaked out and being like, oh my god, I don't have enough moisture. I need to produce tons and tons of oil to compensate for that. You might find that if you moisturize at night or even use an oil at night in addition to a moisturizer, your skin might calm down the oil production. So as far as moisturizers go, there are two options that I have. This is the one that I'm using right now. This is the CVS Health Moisturizing Lotion. They do have a few out there and so so I'm really gonna do my best to find the exact one that I have, but in general, these CVS Health um, skincare products are total knockoffs of CeraVe. I don't shop with CeraVe anymore because they're no longer BDS safe, um, but this is BDS safe to what I understand, and so I really, really like these. This moisturizer is amazing. It comes in great packaging. I love the packaging on this because it's a pump packaging. It's opaque, and so that means that there's no interaction with light to break down the ingredients inside. It has ceramides and high hyaluronic acid, both of them are fantastic for replenishing your skin's barrier and replenishing moisture in your skin. And it also has a great blend of emollients to help keep the hydration and also to soften and soothe the skin as well. On the flip side, the Paula's Choice Skin Recovery Replenishing Moisturizer is a bomb if you have very, very dry skin. I definitely use this one more when my skin is feeling really dry, just because this one is a little more heavier than the CVS Health one. This also has a fantastic blend of emollients and humectants to hydrate your skin. It's just a little bit actually a lot more expensive okay so those are kind of the non-negotiables that I have everything on top of that is kind of extra if you are wanting to do the absolute bare minimum skincare routine that is what I recommend starting with is those non-negotiables so now we're gonna move on to kind of extra fun things that you can add in addition to the non-negotiables so if you wear a lot of makeup you do need to remove your makeup I don't think cleansing is quite enough to remove makeup especially if you're wearing a lot of foundation or face products so I recommend using cleansing wipes these are my absolute favorite they're really inexpensive at the drugstore and they're even more inexpensive on Amazon in my Amazon store I have a pack of three that you can get for way cheaper than actually in stores these are the simple micellar cleansing wipes these are phenomenal they don't have any drying ingredients in them and they really are gentle the like cloth themselves are really soft and so I personally use these whenever I'm wearing makeup to just kind of wipe down my face and make sure I'm getting all my foundation off and all my mascara and eyeliner and everything and then if I have really stubborn makeup on like water Proof something I go in also with a makeup remover these are dual phase makeup removers and so there's a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic phase it removes all types of makeup and all types of impurities and so you do have to give it a good shake to combine the layers and make an emulsion um, but once you have your emulsion all I do is I put some on my cleansing wipe and I just go in and kind of massage it around really gently um, and these really do the trick so this is a Paula's Choice one this one is a little more expensive than the, than the Too Cool for School Zoo Koza makeup remover this one is smaller though, but this one's around $12, I think, and this one's a little bit more, and so really just depends on what you're looking for. Uh, but these are two really great ones that I personally recommend and I personally use. If you have a lot of blackheads or if you have a lot of texture and congestion in your
your skin due to your pores being really congested you definitely need to use a beta hydroxy acid the one that i'm using right now is the ordinary salicylic acid two percent so this guy is really great because what you can do is just add one or two drops of it on your problem areas or all over your skin and it really does help to get inside your pores and clean out your pores i do have a video coming all about blackheads it's during the last week of december i think is when i'm going to upload it uh, so stay tuned for that video please subscribe if you don't want to miss that video but yeah if you struggle with texture or congestion or blackheads or even breakouts associated with your pores being clogged this is definitely a must-have for your skincare routine i recommend using a bha one to two times a week and do them kind of spaced out throughout the week like don't do the bha two days in a row kind of do it on monday and then like maybe on thursday to improve your skin's overall texture and that your skin's overall evenness in your skin tone itself i recommend using an alpha hydroxy acid an aha is really good if you do have drier skin because the bha can be a little bit drying but an aha is a lot more gentle but it does a little bit more superficial work on the surface of your skin so really it just depends on what you're looking for ahas are really great for kind of resurfacing your skin the one that i personally use is the paula's choice resist 10 percent glycolic acid treatment this one is phenomenal i've been using this for a while now i think this is my second bottle and i have a third backup i have seen amazing results in my skin using this i just have much less texture now because i used to get really bad texture on my cheekbones and cheeks right here um, but ever since i started using this i really haven't had that big of an issue if you're starting out again use this one to two times a week and like i said for the bha space them out throughout the week the ordinary also does an aha i do have their lactic acid one i just haven't tried it yet if you have hyperpigmentation from maybe sun damage or leftover acne marks like the dark marks not scars but like the dark acne marks left over i recommend using a skin lightening agent like arbutin or vitamin c and so as far as vitamin c goes these are the two candidates that i have for you this one is really inexpensive this is the ordinary vitamin c suspension at 23 percent plus hyaluronic acid spheres at two percent this one is water free and it's kind of like a gritty texture because it does have the spheres in it um but if that doesn't bother you this one's really really good for kind of targeting hyperpigmentation and making sure that your skin tone is really even if you want to spend a ton of money the paula's choice resist c15 booster is amazing the problem is that it's really expensive and it oxidizes really quickly but if that doesn't bother you and you want to see like immediate results this one is you can't get any better than this if vitamin c isn't your thing and arbutin is something a little more interesting to you the ordinary's alpha arbutin two percent plus hyaluronic acid is really really good i've seen great results using this one paula's choice also sells a brightening essence which basically does the same thing as this it's just that this one is a lot more inexpensive also paula's choice has a radiance renewal mask this one is really awesome i personally love using this as an overnight leave on mask it's the last step of my skincare routine i think it's really really good if you have acne i recommend using some spot treatments and so the two spot treatments that I use, well, okay, let's start with the more gentle one first. The first one is the Alchemine um, Tea Tree Oil. You can get tea tree oil from anywhere, just make sure it doesn't have alcohol in it. Um, but tea tree oil is a phenomenal antibacterial oil that really helps to reduce inflammation and help combat breakouts. So how I use this is I just mix one drop of this into some of my moisturizer and I apply it as a spot treatment wherever I need it. With tea tree oils like this that are undiluted, you have to dilute it yourself. And so I recommend diluting it in either another oil or in your moisturizer. For really, really stubborn breakouts that will not go away or are really, really deep and inflamed, I use the Clearasil Ultra Rapid Vanishing Treatment. This one is at 10% benzoyl peroxide, which is very powerful, but it definitely does get the job done. It just comes at a cost because it really does dry my skin out, and so I only ever use this when I really need the big guns. If you get dry patches on your skin, I recommend using a humectant or an oil, or a combination of the two to help combat that. And so the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid Serum is really, really bomb. I love using this in the morning and also at night sometimes. Hyaluronic Acid is a fantastic humectant because because it draws in moisture from the air into your skin. So do you remember when I talked about how your climate should impact your skincare routine? If you live in a really humid climate and you really struggle with dryness, hyaluronic acid or even glycerin is a fantastic serum to apply to your skin because there is so much moisture and humidity in the air. It really can draw a lot of moisture out of the air and into your skin. On the flip side, if your skin is really, really dry but you live in an extremely dry, arid type of environment, these humectants may not be the best idea for you because there is no 
moisture in the air to begin with it might actually draw moisture out of your skin so i would just err on the side of caution with that if you live in a really dry climate if you do live in a really dry climate the other thing you can do to help combat dryness is to add a beauty oil because what it does is that it'll kind of seal in any moisture your skin does have and give your skin an opportunity to kind of regenerate and so the oil that i've been completely obsessed with for the past few months i guess is the ordinaries of rosehip seed oil it just it's so good just take my word for it buy it it's so inexpensive it's just so good the other two oils that i've been using are from a brand called worker bee they're a small minneapolis based company and they do all sorts of skincare with raw honey and propolis which is just phenomenal i absolutely love those ingredients and so i have the dusk serum and the dawn serum i have been using the dusk serum at night and it's just a fantastic blend of propolis and also some really great oils to help moisturize your skin and make your skin really really soft on the alternate side the dawn serum i use in the morning i'm actually wearing right now underneath my makeup uh, this is a lighter blend of oils and also has propolis in it as well these two are really really great ones i'll leave the link for it in the info box i love worker bee they are such nice people if your skin is like extra dry and like really needs help in addition to using like a humectant and oil and stuff like that you can also add a layer of vaseline on top of your skin to really seal in the moisture vaseline is one of those things that people are really scared to put on their skin but i'm here to tell you that it is absolutely safe to use petroleum jelly is one of the most inert substances that you can put on your face the molecules themselves are huge hydrocarbons there's no way they can possibly penetrate into your skin or cause any damage whatsoever they're just hydrocarbons you can definitely apply a thin layer of vaseline wherever you're having a really really intense dryness and i do think it'll help your skin a lot to retain moisture if you struggle with excessive oiliness it's going to sound really counterproductive but use a beauty oil i just mentioned a bunch of oils but the worker bee serums are called serums but they're oil-based serums and then also so the Ordinary's rosehip seed oil. Add an oil as a last step to your skincare routine and you'd be surprised. Like your skin may produce less oil because there's already oil on your skin. And then finally, the last problem that you may be struggling with is fine lines and wrinkles. If you do have fine lines and wrinkles already, I recommend using something like retinol palmitate or retinol. Those are two really fantastic ingredients to help reduce the appearance of wrinkles. Retinol palmitate is actually a skin identical ingredient in the sense that your skin already produces it and exists naturally in your skin. And so when you add more of it, it really is a natural solution to wrinkles. Retinol or vitamin A is an amazing ingredient that you can use to diminish the appearance of wrinkles. The only thing is that it can be a little bit potent. So if you're starting out using retinol, I recommend using it maybe one or two times a week. You can really slowly incorporate it into your skincare routine so that your skin doesn't like suddenly freak out that you're using a retinol. If you want to prevent fine lines and wrinkles, don't use stuff like retinols. Retinol palmitate is okay because your skin already naturally produces it and it's a fantastic antioxidant but like retinol vitamin a itself i would stay away from now because you don't have wrinkles to speak of yet the best way to prevent wrinkles is like i said earlier in the video just use the sunscreen every single day the sun is the easiest way that you can damage your skin but if you use a really good sunscreen with physical sunblock you're not going to have that issue i also wanted to mention that before you do any sort of skincare before you touch your face at all before you even cleanse your face you need to wash your hands first because your hands are dirty grimy grubby little things at the end of the day and so you really need to wash your hands before you touch your face and so the hand soap that i use right now is the aldo vendini hand soap it doesn't have any harsh drying surfactants in it so it really doesn't dry your hands out and it's just a great hand soap and also this kit itself from aldo vendini the hand care set is just a fantastic gift idea i mean look at it it's beautiful and then also everything from sorel care is vegan and cruelty free so you can kind of rest easy knowing that their stuff is vegan cruelty free and also bds safe one quick note Face masks and sheet masks are absolutely not necessary. They are not a non-negotiable. In fact, they are negotiable. You don't have to do them. They're just fun added things that you can do to kind of improve your skin. And it can also be a way of practicing self-care, but it's absolutely not 100% necessary. And then my last point that I wanted to go over is kind of the order of skincare of how you should apply your products. So the first thing you should do is apply an acid if you're going to use an acid. The next step is to apply any sort of serums, not oil-based serums just like water-based serums that can be stuff like hyaluronic acid vitamin c arbutin retinol palmitate any sort of those ingredients you apply after your acid then you can apply your moisturizer and then the last step is to apply any sort of oil-based product so that can be a straight-up oil like the ordinary rosehip seed oil or an oil-based serum like the worker b dusk and dawn serums 
For the morning skincare routine, your SPF should be the absolute last step. That includes makeup, unfortunately. Your SPF needs to be the last step because it has to be on the topmost layer of your skin in order for it to do its work. Um, but then besides that, I don't recommend using acids in the morning. I don't recommend using any sort of skin lightening or anti-aging. I don't recommend using acids in the morning. I don't recommend using any sort of skin lightening ingredients like Arbutin or vitamin C in the morning. And also I don't recommend using retinol in the morning because all of those ingredients are going to cause photosensitivity in your skin. And so it's gonna make you a lot more susceptible to sun damage because your skin's a lot more sensitive to the sun when you use these ingredients. And also don't forget to pick up this alchemy cleanser. It's only gonna be 20% off until December 21st. So I really recommend taking advantage of that discount code. So this is a fantastic one to pick up. Again, the code is SC. Kaya 20. So I think that's the end of this video. I hope I covered everything that I wanted to cover because it was kind of a lot of information. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I talked about or maybe I didn't touch on something that you wanted to hear about. Please leave your questions and comments. Thank you all so much for watching this video and spending this time with me. I hope you learned something new. Please subscribe to my channel for more chemistry based skincare videos. In the month of December I am doing one video a week which doesn't sound like a lot but for me that's a lot because I am a full-time student and it is final season so I hope you appreciate what I'm doing. But until my next video, I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you then. Bye.